This video in the capstone video series will help you as you begin to develop your oral capstone presentation. We want to acknowledge up front that this video is a bit longer than our other capstone videos. However, the information presented is directly related to how you'll be graded on your presentation. So we encourage you to hang in there for the entire video and don't hesitate to refer back to it as you continue to prepare your presentation. It will be well worth your while. As previously mentioned in other videos, you'll present your capstone project to an audience during the public health forum at the end of the semester that you complete your capstone project. You'll create and deliver a 10 to 12 minute presentation using PowerPoint. After the presentation, the audience members will be able to ask questions about your project. And just as with your capstone poster, your presentation will follow the same outline as your abstract. You'll be graded on not only the content of your presentation and the delivery of your presentation, but also the visual aspects of your presentation. Before putting your presentation together, you should review the grading rubric for this assignment in Canvas so that you understand the presentation components your faculty advisor will be looking for. One of the elements that you should address early on in your presentation is the public health relevance of your project. Don't assume that the audience understands the connection between the main topic of your capstone project and public health. This should be explicitly called out in your presentation. As you can see in the sample slides shown on the screen, there are many ways that this can be done. You'll need to include citations and references in your presentation. In the examples shown on the left, you can see a web link being inserted at the bottom of the slide for a source of a map. And in the other example, you can see citations listed at the bottom for the information being presented on that specific slide. You should do this throughout your presentation so that the sources for information presented on a specific slide are available for viewing on that same slide. We encourage you to include an acknowledgement slide at the end of the presentation thanking the individuals who contributed to the successful completion of your capstone project. This might include your direct supervisor, a team or department, your faculty advisor, a faculty mentor, or anyone else who you felt provided you with guidance, support, or expertise. In the rest of this presentation, we'll go over some best practices and tips for creating a presentation that your audience will enjoy watching. This includes using a mix of text and graphics, allowing for ample white space on your slides, the time that you spend on an individual slide, the readability of the content on your slides, using only key points on your slide, and not reading directly off your slides. One critical component of creating a presentation that people will enjoy watching is to not have only text on every slide. When possible and appropriate, you can add in images such as photographs, public stock art, logos for organizations that you're working with, or other images that represent what you're talking about. In this slide, you can see that the results section posted on the left is very text heavy and fills the entire slide whereas the purpose slide on the right includes a pleasing visual element from where the work was being conducted in addition to a few key bullet points. The use of images does need to be balanced and it's okay to have some slides with no images or some slides with no text. Make sure that the images you use have meaning and relevance to what's being presented. Just as we discussed in the video about creating your capstone poster, white space is also important for your capstone presentation. Too much information on a slide will make it hard for people to read it. The lack of white space with text also generally means that the presenter will be spending a lot of time on that one slide. A general guideline is to not spend more than one to two minutes on one slide. As you go through developing your presentation and you practice presenting out loud and timing yourself, try to be aware of any slides that you seem to be landing on for quite a while. Also, look through your slides for ones that could be split out into multiple slides. For example, the presentation slide shown on the left of your screen has two subtopics of a student survey and a parent survey. Depending on the amount of information that the presenter needed to share about these two surveys, they could have split this into two separate slides, with one slide about the student survey and another about the parent survey. In the example on the right, you can see that this student realized that they had a lot of information to share in their methods section, so they split this out into two different slides. Whether in text or graphic format, you want to think about how the information that you're putting onto your slide will be viewed by your audience. With many graphs, charts, and tables, we need to be careful to make sure that it's legible by our viewers. 
In the slide presented on the left, it's almost impossible to read most of the words on the slide. So, if this is a critical element of the project, the audience won't be able to grasp it. In the slide on the right, you can clearly see the different colored bars in the chart. In addition to having the numbers along the left side of the chart, the numbers are also presented at the top of each individual bar. The font sizes are large enough for the audience to read the categories, the years, and the numbers. And for all the slides with charts or diagrams, be sure to orient the audience to what they are looking at. So point out column headings or X and Y axis labels, as well as years or other elements that will help the audience to understand what you're showing them. One golden rule for creating presentation slides is that someone shouldn't be able to recreate your presentation with just your slides. This means that only a portion of the information that you provide during a presentation is actually shown on your slides, and the rest is what you say. On your screen, you can see two slides with the same heading. The one on the left has a lot more information and is likely what the presenter actually said during the presentation. The slide on the right only sticks to the key points and then the presenter will fill in the additional information verbally. Not only does this structure add more white space to the slide, making it easier for the audience to read, it also means that the viewers can spend their time listening to what you say as opposed to trying to read every word on your slide. This also leads to the general tip of not reading directly off your slides. With a slide full of text, it's very tempting for a presenter to turn their back to the audience and read the words on the slide. This can actually cause a disengagement with the audience, and the tone that someone uses when reading off of a slide can be quite monotonous. With only key points on the slide, you can't fall into the trap of reading off your slides because all the information that you need to be saying isn't there. You'll have to speak directly to the audience, which they'll find much more engaging. During the month before the Public Health Forum, you'll have an opportunity to attend one of several practice sessions for your capstone presentation. You don't need to have completed your presentation and are welcome to attend with only a draft presentation or an outline of your presentation. This is an opportunity for you to see what other students are doing, as well as to receive feedback from students and advisors about your presentation. And for students who get nervous about presenting in public, this is a great way to get a little more comfortable with presenting the information to an audience. Your advisor will reach out to you about the practice session dates and times. We hope that this video has been helpful to you as you begin developing your capstone presentation. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to your faculty advisor and they'll be happy to help you. When you're ready, you can go on to the last video in the Capstone Project video series, which provides an overview of the required Capstone final paper.